So a couple days ago, I got myself a little Emacs Tiny Hawk, and I absolutely love this little thing. I think it's the coolest thing ever, but there's one problem, for me at least, and that is I use Spectrum. I use a DX8. I prefer to use Spectrum. I don't have a Tranus, and I'm not about to buy another one because I have so many controllers. But, like, I, I get this, and I'm really skeptical about whether or not I'm going to be able to use my Spectrum with it or not. I knew that it had a 3.3 volt pad, which was perfect for a satellite, but no one had put a satellite in one or a different receiver at all that I had found at the time. So, today I'm here to teach you guys how to put a Spectrum satellite in your Emacs Tiny Hawk. So, you'll get it like this. It'll come out of the box just like this, out of its little case. And the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously remove the battery. And there'll be some screws here, and we'll want to take these out. Alright, I've just finished taking the screws off, and we're going to pull the cover off the bottom, and I'll show you what we're working with. Obviously there's four ESCs also soldered onto this board, so simply replacing the flight controller will work, but is difficult. Now here we see, I'll get a little pointer here. Right here there are three pads. One, two, and three, right there. Now normally between the last two, the negative and the 3.3 volt, there's going to be a little capacitor soldered between them to help prevent brownouts. But So um, the first version of the Tiny Hawk does not come with that capacitor. And once Emacs realized their mistake, they started adding them. So if, if yours comes with a capacitor, go ahead and desolder that capacitor because we, we're going to be using these pads. Now that you're relatively familiar with the internals of this, we'll start off with the Spectrum satellite you should have. Here I'm using a little Limit RX satellite. Just the standard mil like, standard little thing you'd, you'd have with your receiver if you're using Spectrum. Get that bit again. On mine there is one screw in the back, so we'll just go ahead and remove that screw. Make sure you save your screws because if you're like me, you lose stuff real fast. I have been using this one, but that's alright. And um, I already did it, but I wholeheartedly suggest if you guys are going to be putting this on the Tiny Hawk, put a little bit of a couple drops of epoxy on the antennas because, especially with this satellite, I have a huge issue with the antennas falling off just if you move them around once they're outside of the case. I mean, obviously, it's not an issue when they're inside the case, but. For what we're doing here, it's best to make sure they're reinforced somehow. Now, I like to save my stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and put the case back together, just in case I repurpose this. So, one of the biggest issues with using a Spectrum satellite on mini quads in the first place is binding it. I always tend to have problems binding it, and other people say that, that that's my fault. But, you know, I find stuff like this a bit difficult. But the easiest way I've found to bind these is with a little, another RC airplane, or with a receiver. So, on this one, I already have, this is my little airplane, I have a receiver here already plugged in. And it's bound to my DX8, and then on the side there's a satellite connector, and I simply plug this end into the satellite, and then bind this airplane to a Tiny Hawk model that I have set up already. And uh, after that I go ahead and rebind this to the airplane, to the model that I was using to fly it in the first place. But with that, all you'll have to do is power this and plug it into the PPM on this, and it will bind to your controller. In theory, it, it usually works, you might have to do it a couple times. <laughs> so I went ahead and destroyed a little Spectrum PPM con connector here. And it's what we'll be using. The wires are about as long as they need to be. This will just simply plug into this. And if you want to, you can remove the connector. But I'm not going to, just because that's a pain. And I crash a lot, so I want it to be relatively durable. So the wiring on Spectrum satellites is sometimes a bit confusing, but a quick Google search can clear that up real quick. But I'll do it for you. 
On this satellite in particular, the square pad is the RX, the PPM signal, and then we have negative and power here. So we have ground and then, and then power here. And you can use these three pads on, its, on the side of solder it if you'd like, but like I said, I'm going to use the connector. On the connector, the red wire is your positive, the black wire is of course your negative, and the white wire is going to be um, RX, PPM. You're going to sometimes have a connector that is completely black wires, and then you'll just have to keep track of them. Good luck. This is, this is another option you can use if you want to solder them. That works as well. Now if you have a friend to help you or a family member, this is that's very, very, very nice. But I don't, but my trusty DX8 is always there for me. Alright, the middle pad is going to be negative. And when you're doing this, be very careful to check for bridges, because if you bridge it, it's not going to work. Alright, that's not the prettiest soldering job you or I have ever seen, that's for sure, but if it gets the job done, it works right until you crash and knock your wire off. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean up that uh, PPM wire, because looking at it now, I think it might be touching the bind button, which, by the way, you won't be using. Alright, yours should look something like that. Alright, so now that the uh, connector is soldered onto the Tiny Hawk. We'll go ahead and grab the Spectrum satellite and figure out how we want it put in here. In my particular case, I'm going to mount mine sideways like that and then loop the... or well, not like that. I'm going to mount mine sideways like this and then loop the cable around to connect to it. And it does in fact fit into this plastic and the plastic is nice and flexible so you'll have a little bit of room to play with. Now because we are working with electronics and Spectrum satellites have a lot of copper and metal on them, they are conductive, you could totally blow your flight controller up. And the uh, most compact and by far quickest way to do that is using electrical tape, or to not to blow your thing up, but to, to fix the conductivity is to use electrical tape. I'm just going to wrap it around once on the satellite, and that will prevent it from shorting once, it, once it's sandwiched in between the quad. Alright, I went through every box I had, and the last one I looked in had some double-sided tape. And this is perfect for the job, we'll just cut a little tiny square out. Because, you know, if we have it too big, it'll be impossible to get out of the quad, and probably impossible to close the quad. Yep, that closes down pretty well. I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in as well. Alright, all plugged in. It's time to go ahead and screw the quad back together. Alright, once you got it together, you can go ahead and just tuck these antennas right down in between the board and then run them around the frame like that. That's what I like to do. They do pop out when you slam into stuff, but well, at least I would imagine that one will for sure. <laughs> and then after all of this, if you're lucky, your battery will still slide in. And look at that, good as new. It's now a Spectrum Tiny Whip with a piece of electrical tape. Alright, to check to see if you did all of the actual hardware work correctly, there will be a little red light on your satellite, on your Spectrum satellite, you'll be able to see it right there, when it is bound to the transmitter. So I have this plugged in, the satellite soldered in theoretically correctly, and my Spectrum bound and set up on this model. Alright, so I have Betaflight opened, and you can see all my uh, testing up here in the log because I failed to clear it. But what what you want to do is just
plug the quad in, and it should automatically connect if you have the auto-connect box ticked. And uh, if it doesn't work, you'll have to use a tool to install some USB drivers, and that's called Zadig. It's Z-A-D-I-G. You can download that pretty much anywhere. So I'm just plugging in the quad here, and it should connect, and hopefully last of it. Now, after a little bit of testing, I have discovered that moving the quad around while it's plugged in and making this gyro move causes the program to lock up, which is really weird. I've never seen that before. But the first thing, obviously, you're going to want to do is enable expert mode because, you know, you have to have expert mode. So I already did all the programming, but I'll go ahead and walk you through what I did to make it work. And I've already th flown it. So I changed nothing in the ports. This worked. Don't mess with it because if you do, it's going to break. Now in configuration, there is a couple things I changed. So this will be uh, set on serial based receiver from the factory, at least mine was. And down here this will be set to, I think, SBUS? Yeah. But if you're using a DSMX satellite, you need to switch it to Spectrum 2048. After doing that, you'll save and reboot. And you'll hop down over here to receiver and you'll see if these work, so I'm going to turn on my transmitter. You don't have to have the battery plugged in but you might have to reboot the quad. Nope. All right, so I haven't set my subtrims. But you can see that we even have a little preview on the bottom of how bad my subtrims are. But when I move my sticks, they work. Now there's a lot of things that uh, might not work here. First of all, your channel map, if it isn't T-A-E-R, it's not gonna work. You'll have like your yaw controlling your throttle or something like that, and that's never good. But so, I'll go ahead and show you which directions I'm moving my sticks when this moves, so you can do the reversing on your transmitter. Because, uh, yeah, a lot of the controls will actually be reversed. So I'm doing, uh, I'm rolling right right now. Left. I'm putting my pitch stick toward me. Pulling it toward me, pushing it away from me. I'm yawing left, yawing right, and throttle is down, and throttle is up. While you're at it, with your transmitter, go ahead and program an arm switch. So my arm switch is auxiliary one. And we have a switch that's doing that. And I also have a three position switch controlling the modes. And then you have all the other auxiliaries to do whatever you want. So to set up the modes, you all want to make sure you have an arm. And my switches were all reversed. I didn't bother fixing that. So my arm switch, I just have it flipped up here. I added the range, set it to auxiliary one and made it so that this little yellow bar is within where that yellow dot is when the switch is flipped up and that causes it to arm. Um, with the modes I have angle and horizon set up on the three position switch and you can see that when it's at angle the yellow bar here intersects the dots when, it, when it's in horizon my middle position it intersects here and then out of the factory this was set up to always have air mode on when there isn't a mode selected so having the switch pulled all the way toward me turns on air mode. Setting up the modes is pretty simple. You'll, you will, of course, want to save that. And if you didn't catch on, make sure you set the auxiliaries to which switch you used. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do as well, because when I got this out of the box, like it was the stick movements were so slow, you barely could fly just because it didn't do anything. Because, I mean, but if, if you've flown quads before, you'll want to change it, but if you're just now starting off it's a good idea to leave it where it is so I personally hopped into pin tuning and increased the degrees per second quite a bit by increasing the RC rate also you can program in your expo here as well I prefer to have less yaw expo personally but that's just me also in your OSD you can set that up and a lot of people including myself when they first plug this in there's it says arming disabled up in the top and mine says that as well just because it, I didn't have the transmitter off so you can turn on down here warnings turn that little tick on on the OSD and drag the little thing up here so when your quad doesn't arm it's going to tell you what's wrong so it'll be like oh your throttle's too high or your receiver isn't bound in your video and that's super useful as well and there's a whole lot of stuff you can change but a lot of them don't really give you data because the sensors aren't hooked up. With that, your quad should work just fine. You'll go ahead and disconnect it and take it for a spin.